Welcome to our web service for the 28th Sunday in the season of hope, or as the Church of England properly calls it, the 17th Sunday after Trinity. On the 4th of October at 10.30am, for our morning prayer service, we'll be having a Harvest Festival uh, celebration, COVID restrictions being what they are, and uh, our collection will be taken and the goods will be collected in the porch at the front of the church. There is still time for you, if you want to add to that collection, uh, to drop your goods into the porch of the church uh, of St. Chad's. Thank you. Welcome to this place of worship, house of prayer for many, home to all who come. Welcome to this gathering place, friend and stranger, saint and sinner, and all who gather here. Come with hope or hesitation. Come with joy or yearning. All who hunger, all who thirst for life in all its fullness. Generous God and generous Saviour, touch us through your Spirit. say together our prayer of preparation. Christ, come to be with us, be our home and our belonging place, the hearth fire we come back to, and the bond that binds us all. Be the one who holds us all together, be the reason for our sharing and the rhythm of our work song. Be the heart of our joined lives. Amen. We say our prayers for saying sorry. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. 
Lord have mercy. Together in worship, we face what we might not face alone. We are sometimes lazy and fail to love God. Lord, forgive us and heal us. We are sometimes selfish, but fail to love ourselves. Lord, forgive us and heal us. We are human, but sometimes fail to love others. Lord, forgive us and heal us. We share now in silence as we remember our own faults and failings. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now stand together to say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all people. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You who take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You who sit at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you only are holy, only you are Lord, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect for today. Gracious God, you call us to fullness of life. Deliver us from all belief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 5, and reading from the first verse. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of his vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to Jesus, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on, in, on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was talking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds, because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. first Sunday in October is celebrated as World Communion Day and is observed by several Christian denominations. It promotes Christian unity and ecumenical cooperation and is considered a time to celebrate the unity of the church. We do this, of course, through the one thing that we all do in sharing the bread and sharing the wine which we do to remember Jesus and his love for us. And it is through the sharing of Christ's body and Christ's blood that we seek to establish and share a common unity. Community plus union equals communion. World communion seems to be a pretty outrageous concept at the best of times. Even church unity nowadays seems a pretty bold and even at times somewhat deluded claim. Our gospel reading today seems not to be about communion, but about disunion. The vineyard owner and the vineyard renters are engaged in a violent conflict. It sounds more like a vivid description of present day politics uh, whichever side of the Atlantic uh, that is that you live on, it all seems to be the same. So perhaps it is foolish to talk about world communion, especially in this current COVID-19 world that we are forced to live. A world where if something is wrong or you don't agree, uh, then someone else is to blame. We might be inclined to dismiss Jesus' parable as just an ancient story. A story about a vengeful, judgmental God of whom, frankly, we want no part. But if we ling linger a little longer with this text, we may just be able to see a little more. We may be able to see a message of hope from a generous, loving and just God. 
despite making a mess of the world through the way we live our lives, the way we spoil the world, and also the way that we interpret and exercise our religious beliefs, Jesus proclaims a God that continues to plant and cultivate his vineyard. Grapes will grow again. Wine will flow again. And Jesus says to us, I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me and you will bear much fruit. Vineyards in the Bible are always a symbol uh, of hope, especially early in the Bible. Uh, you may remember that after the flood, when Noah gets to dry land, the first thing he does after God makes a covenant with him is to plant a vineyard. Now, the text there doesn't even tell us that he built a house. So why a vineyard? Why not just plant wheat and barley and corn? You know, the stuff he needs to eat on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, the reality is that vineyards take a long time and lots of hard work to develop. Even after you acquire the land, there is still much preparation and much hard work to be done. There basically is no cash flow for anything in the region of three to five years while you wait for the grapes to be good enough. So to plant a vineyard takes a lot of patience, a lot of intensive work, uh, and a lot of hope, of course. And also, you need to invest much time and money and labour. So vineyards are a long-term investment over many years. When we read about planting vineyards in the Bible, it means that we are finding enough peace, enough stability and enough hope to work for the long haul. It's some time and place where we can see a future. For your immediate needs, you plant wheat and you pray, God, give us this day our daily bread. When people are longing and hoping in the wilderness of Sinai or in exile in Babylon or in some deep drought, prophets would say to them, you will plant vineyards again. There will be new wine. To plant a vineyard then is to believe in the future. To plant a vineyard is to have hope. Jesus' audience at the time would have known that he was using the Isaiah 5 reading that we've also heard today, that he would have been using that Isaiah reading for this parable that he was telling them. This is, the, the Isaiah 5 reading is, of course, the song of the unfruitful vineyard, uh, which we heard as our first reading. Jesus takes the account from Isaiah and develops it a little bit further. Jesus' vineyard story isn't yielding wild grapes, as Isaiah's account is. The tenants in Jesus' parable are beating uh, the slaves of the owner and killing the owner's son. Jesus is stating here that the temple and the priestly classes of his time, the ruling classes if you like, are cooperating with injustice and turning a blind eye to the poor. They are becoming just plain greedy and arrogant. This is a message for any who are in positions of power and authority, especially uh, for us today, that they too those in power, must exercise this power with justice, exercise this power with care, and exercise this power with integrity for the benefit of all, not just the select few. Both Isaiah and Jesus ask, how should the vineyard owner handle this? What would you do about those responsible for violence? And injustice. The violence here 
is not being initiated by an angry and vengeful God. This violence is the result of human greed and injustice. Jesus never says here that God is going to harm anyone. He asks, though, all those around him, what will the owner do to those tenants who have abused and killed the help and killed the, the uh, heir of the vineyard owner? They say to him, their response to Jesus is, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus then tones down this violence by saying, the kingdom of God will be taken away from them. The heart of what Jesus wants to get to is this. God's spirit moves to people who want to bear fruit. God will find those who want to hear. I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me and you will bear much fruit. The whole world is God's vineyard. The planet itself and all life upon it. The means of production and work. The activity of the church and the lives we lead. These are all part of the vineyard. A progressive church, of course, works for social and economic justice. We too must plan and we too must plant for the long haul. We must nourish and enjoy this vineyard that we are part of. Our work includes our spiritual lives, our worship and our prayers. It includes building relationships and building community. Lavishly spreading forgiveness and hope. Welcoming those on the margins. All of this is vineyard work. When then do we plant our vineyard? Amen. We say together our words of faith. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. He died forsaken, he descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, Spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you have called us to know you. You have called us to love you. You have called us to serve you. Make us worthy of our calling and may we proclaim your power and your peace in the world. May we rejoice in your light and in your love, through Christ the living Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are Lord of all you created. We thank you for your love and grace in our lives, even though it is more than we will ever understand in this life. We thank you for all that you have provided for us to physically sustain our lives and your word to feed us spiritually. You are an awesome God and there is no one else like you. You sent your son, Jesus, to show us that you, Father, are all and everything we can ever want or need in our lives. 
and that through the death and resurrection of Jesus we can know redemption and salvation from our sin and eternal life in your presence. Lord, have mercy and hear our prayer. O Lord, forgive the foolishness of your people and those who do not know you yet. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit and inspire us to put the past behind us and look to your kingdom and the well-being of all living creatures on the earth. Help us to have respect for nature and for our fellow brothers and sisters. Lord, have mercy and hear our prayer. We bring to you, Lord, our concerns for our world. Our prayers continue to be dominated by the coronavirus. We pray that the rise in the number of cases of the coronavirus will be brought back under control very soon. We continue to pray for the safety of doctors and nurses across the world and in our NHS as they care for more and more people with the virus and for carers in care homes and in the community. May your healing power be felt not only by all those who suffer because of the virus, but anyone who suffers in mind, body or spirit, that you, Lord, would be glorified in all the earth. Lord, have mercy and hear our prayer. Almighty God, for whom nothing is impossible, help those who are working on a vaccine for COVID-19 to know exactly what will work in order to protect mankind in the future and that never again will the virus cause so much pain and suffering in the world. Lord, have mercy and hear our prayer. We pray for the candidates in the elections for the next President of the USA. As we have seen on the news concerning President Trump, things are already getting ugly in the debates. And we pray that the campaigning may be carried out amicably and with respect for the people of America, who have to choose who they want to be the next president. May we see your power at work in, these, in the elections, that the person elected is the right choice for the USA at this time. Guide the thoughts of those who will be voting to select the candidate you, you have anointed for the purpose of leading the USA to a time of peace and prosperity for all men and women, regardless of the colour of their skin. Lord, have mercy and hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we bring to you the people in our communities of Hopwas and Tamworth, be with us all in the coming weeks as we continue to keep ourselves and others safe from the virus. Be with those who cannot face leaving their homes and those whose mental health has been affected by the restrictions in place to slow the spread of the virus. May your peace and strength sustain us, especially those who are ill, remembering Beryl and Roger, Audrey, Catherine and Eric, Jim, Barbara Bott, Jack, Leslie Fox, Brian Thompson, Norma and Dave Atkinson and anyone known to us personally. May they all know your comfort in their suffering. Lord have mercy and hear our prayer. Father, we commend to you Margaret Dale, who has passed from our presence into yours. We are sad that Margaret is no longer with us and she will be missed. Lord, may she know the joy of being with you. And we pray for her family as they mourn her death and prepare for her funeral. Lord, have mercy and hear our prayer. Lord, we pray also for ourselves that you would come and enlighten the darkness of our hearts. Give us true faith, a certain hope and a perfect love. Give us a sense of your divine presence 
and true knowledge of yourself, so that we may do everything in fulfilment of your holy will. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech that with the angels and the archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise, saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms upon the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence. His sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. And remember his dying and rising in glory. And we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and the blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us with Chad and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so we share together in the words that Jesus himself has taught us, beginning, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. We say together, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Share together, in this meal, where loss finds comfort in promise and despair is transformed into hope. Whoever you are, whatever you bring, 
hear the risen Christ call your name and accept God's invitation to new life. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. We say together now our prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We now sing our final hymn. May the everlasting God shield you, east and west, and wherever you go. And the blessing of God be upon you, the blessing of the God of life, the blessing of Christ be upon you, the blessing of the Christ of love, the blessing of the Spirit be upon you, the blessing of the Spirit of grace. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Let us go into the world rejoicing. It is Christ who goes before us. Thanks be to God. Amen.